Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we have another SPF powder review and wear test, and that is of the Mineral Fusion Brush On SPF 30 Protection Powder. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on the ingredients, if you wanna see how it wears on my skin, you are in the right place. I will do multiple reapplications throughout the day so you can get a good feel for how this reapplies on top of makeup and if it has a white cast or not, I'm very curious. So if you want to know if this Mineral Fusion SPF powder is worth the purchase or not, we will jump right into it. All right, before we jump into the actual ingredients and details of this powder, I want to apply the first application of it. So this is the same exact type of setup as, what was the other one I just reviewed you guys? The Derma E powder. Oh my gosh, I could not think of that for the life of me. This is the same kind of packaging as the Derma E powder and as a lot of other powder SPFs where it has the product down here and then it has this brush ooh, on top. So I'm gonna try out using this just as is in this packaging. If you guys saw my Derma E powder review, then you know that I had to repackage that into kind of a powder sifter not kind of a powder sifter, into a powder sifter so that I could actually tell how much I was applying to my skin. I was kind of having a hard time with their applicator. I'll put a card for that video here and link it below if you haven't seen it yet, but hoping we can just use this one as is. Right off the bat, I can just kind of tell that more SPF powder, come on that more SPF powder does come out right off the bat. So that's a good sign. Let's just go ahead and do the first application. I already have sunscreen on and a full face of makeup. The foundation that I'm wearing is the Physician's Formula, the Healthy Foundation. And then I actually have a Sun Bum Tinted Mineral Sunscreen on underneath that I filmed a review for you guys on. So everything you need to know will be linked in the description box below, but let's go ahead and do the first application of this powder. All right, same issue here. I couldn't really tell how much powder was coming out. The reason that's concerning is because if I'm using an SPF powder, I'm using it for the SPF. Otherwise, I would just use a regular powder. So I wanna make sure that enough is coming out of this packaging to make sure that I'm getting adequate protection and fully covering my face. Ugh. So I'm gonna unpackage this one as well into a powder sifter. I feel like I just wanna make sure that I'm giving these SPF powders a fair review. And I know obviously this is the packaging it comes in, but I wanna actually review the powder itself and not the packaging, so. Okay, so this just twists off. I'm hoping this isn't gonna spill. And then again, I got these powder, I don't even know what to call these. I got these from Amazon and they come in a pack of quite a few. So I will link those in my description box below if you're interested, but let's do this. All right, so now I know for sure that I was able to get that powder all over my face and that definitely mattified me quite a bit. I feel like I look pretty flat right now, which I just don't love. It kind of took away all of my glow. So we'll just see as I'm sitting here talking with you guys if my natural oils do start to come through a little bit or if it keeps me very stark and matte and flat. If that's the case, I'm not going to love it, but we'll see. I think the powder looks nice on the skin, aside from the fact that it is matter than I would like. I think my skin looks nice. It doesn't look too cakey or heavy. It definitely did not delete my bronzer and blush, which is great. That's definitely an issue that I have with SPF powders. If I'm using an SPF powder, it's because I'm wearing makeup. Otherwise, I just use liquid SPF. And then of course, I don't want that powder to remove the bronzer and blush that I have on. That's defeating the purpose. So that's good. It definitely did kind of fade the color a little bit, but it's not fully removed. So initial application, I don't have any major complaints. It's not my favorite look to my skin, but so far so good. And there's no white cast, which is very important. 
All right, now let's talk through ingredients and some of the details of this powder. The Mineral Fusion Brush On SPF 30 Protection Powder. This has 0.14 ounces of product in it and it retails for $24.99. So that is the same amount of product that that Derma E SPF powder has. But that one I believe is around $21.99. So this one's a little bit pricier. We'll see if it's worth the extra few dollars. And this one says that it's a translucent matte finish, which so far I would agree with, that it's for all skin tones and has broad spectrum protection of mineral SPF 30. So the active ingredients here are 17.3% titanium dioxide, as well as 20% zinc oxide. And then the rest of the ingredients here, similar to that Derma E powder, were pretty stripped back and don't have a lot going on, but I don't have an issue with that when it comes to a powder. There's a few key ingredients that I do want to call out. This does have caprylic triglycerides in it, which I love to see in a powder because caprylic triglycerides help our skin to resist moisture loss, and they're just a really good emollient that help to moisturize and soften the skin. So whenever I have a powder like this that I'm going to be reapplying throughout the day multiple times, I want to make sure I have at least one if not a few nice moisturizing ingredients. This also has tocopherol in it, which is a great antioxidant for the skin. That's the same thing as vitamin E. Unfortunately, we don't know how much tocopherol is in here, so I wouldn't rely on this for your antioxidant support. It's probably not that much within a powder like this, but it still is on the label. And then this has a couple other hydrating ingredients that are good, but not spectacular. So I don't feel like I need to go into depth there. The second to last ingredient is actually retinol palmitate. And that's actually a form of vitamin A combined with fatty acids. It's a very effective antioxidant that helps to protect our skin from UV damage. However, again, there's probably not that much retinol palmitate in this formulation. It's the second to last ingredient. So wanted to mention that in case, but again, it's probably not that much is going to make a significant difference so I still recommend using a separate product for antioxidant support that has some really nice ingredients in it and not relying on this and then the last ingredient here is iron oxides I've talked about iron oxides quite a few times here before just as it relates to UV protection and as an ingredient to look out for in your sunscreens I'll put a card here for where I talk about that in a previous video and I will also link it below if you are interested in learning more on that but iron oxides are essentially the thing that add the color Color or pigment to this powder so here you can see this powder is not fully white it does have color to it that's going to be from the iron oxides and then of course I have to mention fragrance and essential oils and thankfully neither of those things are within this SPF powder formulation so we are safe there so right off the bat while the ingredient label isn't this spectacular amazing thing it doesn't have anything in it that concerns me I like that it has caprylic triglycerides and tocopherol in it towards the top of the label However, I would definitely like to see a couple more hydrating ingredients within that powder because I can right now feel that it definitely does feel a little bit dry on my skin and I don't have dry skin. So this might not work out for you if you're dry. We'll see how it wears throughout the day. That doesn't really surprise me given how matte my skin looked with that first application, but let's get one more close up before we do our first reapplication and see how this is holding up. Dang, so I feel like normally at this point, some of my natural oils would be peeking through. I'm still looking pretty flat and matte. I mean, at least for me, you guys might be like, what are you talking about? But for me, for normal, what I like for my skin, this is pretty matte still. So we'll be right back for the first reapplication and we'll see if I'm looking a little bit glowier, hopefully. We're back for reapplication. It is so freaking cold in my apartment. It's either like we have the AC on and no matter what temperature it's set for, it's freezing cold. I mean, that's probably a me problem. Or it's not on at all. So I have my huge fuzzy blanket even though it's summer. All right, let's see how we are looking. So some of my natural oils have come through a little bit, like around my nose tiny bit up here by my brow not a ton so it's good it hasn't kept me <laughs> excuse me it's good it has not kept me completely flat and matte but still is definitely more mattifying than other powders that i have so let's do reapplication number one
Okay, so we are completely remattified here. Even though I look very matte, I don't think my skin looks bad. I feel like it still makes my skin look nice. Ooh, okay, so don't love how it feels. Not the worst thing ever. I still think my skin looks fine though. It's just like when I get up close, I'm like, oh! Looking a little bit crepier than I would like to, so. Also, the other thing I realized is that this smells identical to the Milani blush that I've talked about before. It's their like rose petal blush. That's not the name of it, but the one that has that rose print in it. It has a very chalky smell and I've talked about before in old makeup tutorials that I cannot stand the smell of that. This has that same exact kind of smell. I'm really particular about smells and I don't love this. It's not something I continue to smell in my face. At least I haven't so far but it's there, so just FYI on that. So, we're doing good, nothing else to say. We'll be back for the next reapplication. All right, close up time. I'm having a hard time because I do like the way that my skin looks, so I have a Hollywood, is that what it's called? Like those Hollywood vanity mirrors? I have that on my desk, but I can't use it when I film because that would block the natural sunlight. So I'm like peeking over here, and from that distance, I like the way that it looks but super up close. I still do feel like under my eyes and around my eyes, it just looks a little bit creasier than I would like it to because this powder is definitely more drying than others that I own. But I don't think it looks bad. So let's reapply again. Oh, <laughs> what just happened, you guys? What the heck? I just did a little bit of blending action with this large powder brush. It like exploded on that one area of my cheek. For whatever reason, aside from that being a fluke, it just seems to be clinging the most to my cheekbone area. Not underneath my eye, like yes, underneath my eyes, not that as much, but like my cheekbones. I just feel like that's interesting. I feel like normally I don't notice that with powders. So again, we're just looking more matte, you know, same kind of flat vibe that we got with the last two applications. So I did this in my Derma E powder review. I am going to try to refresh my face a bit with my Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. Let's see if that kind of brings my skin back to life a little bit and makes it not look so dry. Also, I'm gonna cover this because it looks gross. If you keep seeing flashes of something, I burned my arm so badly earlier this week. I was making coffee and we have an electric kettle and it was Monday morning. I was just so out of it and I reached directly over the kettle, over the steam of boiling hot water and just scorched my arm. So it's not, I mean, it looks like it's gross right now. I actually have something called medical honey on it and that's what is like showing through the bandage, but it looks gross. So in case you have seen that, I apologize. I promise it's not something funky going on. It's medical honey, but holy crap, you guys. I've never had a burn like that before. It's probably this big on my arm and all the skin right now has like fully peeled off. So it's just raw skin. Sorry, that got really gross. If you're grossed out by stuff like that, sorry, but yeah, it's, it's not cute and I feel like it's gonna be like that for a while so we might just have like band-aids and stuff going on here for a few videos. All right. Okay, I feel like that actually did help quite a bit. I still look matte but it's not looking as cakey as it was looking there. I feel like I just was having issues with this brush. So I feel like we're kind of back to where we were with those first couple applications which it looks good. It's just still flat. So I'll be back one more time for one final reapplication and then I will give you guys my final overall thoughts. My nail polish color might change. I wanna paint my nails and they're chipping. This doesn't matter, we'll be right back. All right, we are back for one final reapplication. Let me give you guys a close up before we do that so you can see where we're at. 
So the one thing I want to say that I immediately noticed in looking in the mirror is that I feel like this is definitely darkened. I don't know if it's oxidized a little bit as the day has gone on or if it's just because as I'm adding more powder, it's continuing to build up that color. But just keep that in mind. Like we can definitely see that my face is a bit darker than my neck, which it was before originally with my foundation but not quite this much. So let's do one final reapplication. Okay, same situation. I don't need to repeat everything that I've already said because the same things are true from the last reapplication to this. So let me give you guys my final thoughts and where I'm at with this powder. I think this powder is going to be perfect for those of you that have oily skin. If you're oily and looking for an SPF setting powder that you can reapply throughout the day, I feel like you're gonna love this because clearly this has kept me very matte. Keep in mind, I have not been out and about outside. I've not been sweating outside. I've just been in my apartment cleaning, doing laundry, you know, very exciting stuff. So that definitely plays a role in how much oils my skin starts to produce. So I would be curious to see how this wears if I was outside on a warm day. Obviously in that scenario, I would start to have more oils come through, but I still feel like this would be a really good option in that situation if you're oily. Definitely more so than the last powder I reviewed, that Derma E powder. I prefer the finish of that one because I just feel like it gave me a more natural finish to the skin. But if you're oily again, I think you'll prefer this one. So if you're super dry, I feel like this powder is a no-go for you. It's making me look like I have dry skin and I do not have dry skin at all. So I just don't think this will work for you, especially if you have flaky patches on your skin. I feel like this would definitely cling to those areas because this is clinging to my cheekbones and certain spots on my skin where I don't even have flaky patches. It's just like clinging there for whatever reason. So keep that in mind if you're very dry, probably not for you. I think if you're normal to oily, you can make it work. Is it my favorite SPF resetting powder formula that I have ever tried? No, I don't love, you know, it's just is feeling a little bit tight. Like now that I'm sitting here thinking about it. I don't love how it feels. It feels a little bit tight and I don't love that it's starting to get darker as the day goes on. But of course, on the flip side of that, there's no white cast and I would rather have this situation than what happened with the Physician's Formula Translucent Powder that I tested out for you guys. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a card here and you'll see at the very end the clear difference between the ends of these SPF powder wear tests. So I would rather have this situation and also, yes, while it has gotten darker, it's not anything that I feel like is crazy noticeable or too much or something that just looks really bad. I think it looks fine. I'm just being really nitpicky. So the good news is that there's not really a white cast except for kind of the areas that it clung to. It doesn't fully delete my bronzer and blush and all of that. Like we can still see a little bit of that peeking through. Of course, not nearly as much as before I put this on, but the fact that I have reapplied this so many times and you can still kind of see a tiny bit of dimension is good news for me as far as makeup goes. If I were to wear this throughout the day going out and about, I do feel like I would want to refresh my bronzer after like the second reapplication but I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking here. So overall, I think it's a good option for a powder. There's nothing concerning in the ingredient label. It does the trick. I don't love the packaging and this brush is kind of the same exact thing as the Derma E brush. It's fine, it works. It's probably not the most ideal as far as making sure that you're covering your entire face evenly for SPF purposes but it works. I don't know that you need to go out and purchase a separate brush, but if you have a more densely packed brush, you're going to get better or more even SPF coverage that way. So, and then the original packaging we saw was like, no go. So now it's gonna be in my sifter. I'm gonna start to have to write the names of all of these on the bottom or there's no way I'm gonna keep track. So overall, I think this is a good option for an SPF resetting powder. If you're a makeup wearer, if you have oily skin, I think it's gonna be a great option. Do I think it's worth $24.99 or do I think the product warrants that price point? I don't feel like I do. I don't know. I don't really feel like something like this should be over $20. You're not getting that much product. Like this is not that much powder. And I feel like I had to use quite a bit to make sure that I was evenly covering my face. 
So, eh, price point is definitely a little bit steep for what you get, but it's not a ripoff. So that is it for this review and wear test. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that this was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and click on that notification bell because I upload three to five days a week for you guys so you don't want to miss out on my next video. Also, before we sign off, I really want to do a Q&A for you guys. A lot of you requested that on my dermatology giveaway that I posted a few weeks ago just saying you want to get to know me better and would love if I did a Q&A. So I thought that would be super fun and I want you guys to get to know me better too. So if you have questions, literally anything goes that you want me to talk about in a Q&A video, leave that in the comments below. Of course, it does not need to be related to skincare or any of my content. Anything that you want to know about me, leave that in the comments below and I will try to answer as many of those as possible for you guys in a Q&A video in the near future. So if there's anything else you would like to see from me next on this channel, leave that request in the comments below as well. We will chat there. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days. Okay, I thought that we were signed off, but I wanna quickly show you guys this. I just removed my makeup and I have quite a bit of redness and just apparent irritation on my skin. I don't know if that's because of the powder it could just be a fluke because I have sensitive skin, but I wanted to show you guys this in case. That does make me a little bit nervous and doesn't fully surprise me just given how dry my skin felt. Ah, so if you have super sensitive skin, just be careful. Obviously, I'm not a dermatologist. I've told you guys this, and I can't tell you what's going to work for your unique skin type. I'm just here to talk through ingredients and share my experience with products. Be careful if you're sensitive because I don't know what this is about, but if it's from the powder, that's concerning. So comment below if you guys have had irritation with this powder, because now I'm like, what? I'll have to see as I continue to use it and I will keep you guys updated if anything changes in a future video, but had to show you this. Transparency over here. We keep things honest. Okay, bye.